The United States has a long history of men and women who follow their dream of getting into show business by traveling to Hollywood. It's a tough road and most people never even make it to the stage. But even for many who do land the role of a lifetime, the spotlight can be short-lived. Most of the time, those people shift their focus somewhere else and continue on with their lives. Sometimes, though, the spotlight dims enough for the star to fall to Earth. In September of 1932, while hiking near the Hollywood Land sign, which is now known as the Hollywood sign, a woman made a discovery. Upon reaching the bottom of the first letter, she spotted a shoe, a jacket, and a purse. Inside the purse, there was a handwritten note expressing apologies for not having done this earlier. What exactly did the note mean by this? The answer became clear when the lifeless body of 24-year-old Peg Entwistle was found further down the hill. Peg had tragically taken her own life by leaping from one of the 50-foot-tall letters that made up the sign. When you think of Los Angeles, Hollywood will often be one of the first things that comes to mind. Hollywood is renowned for its glitz and glamour, attracting apprising stars in pursuit of their performance breakthroughs. Among them was Peg Entwistle, whose journey began in 1908 in Wales. Born as Millicent Lillian Entwistle to British acting parents, it came as no surprise when she eventually chose to pursue acting as her career choice. Peg spent her early years in London but immigrated to the United States with her father after her mother's passing. However, another tragic event unfolded in 1922 when her father was killed in a hit-and-run accident in New York City. At just 14 years old, Peg remained in New York while her brothers relocated to Ohio under their uncle's care. Following in her parents' footsteps, Peg started acting at the tender age of 17. She appeared in various Broadway productions and caught the attention of the New York Theatre Guild in 1926, marking a significant milestone in her burgeoning fame. Subsequently, she married fellow actor Robert Keith. Unfortunately, their marriage soon crumbled with Peg citing his cruelty and the fact that he had concealed his previous marriage and child as a reason for their separation. Despite what was going on in her personal life, Peg persisted in her acting endeavors and remained dedicated to the theater guild, continuing her national tours. In 1929, during an interview with the Oakland Tribune, she expressed her desire for more demanding and convincing roles, stating, quote, I would rather play roles that carry conviction. Maybe it's just because they're the easiest and yet the hardest things for me to do. To play any kind of an emotional scene, I must work up to a certain pitch. If I reach this in my first word, the rest of the words and lines take care of themselves. But if I fail, I have to build up the balance of the speeches and, in doing this, the whole characterization falls flat. I feel that I'm cheating myself. I don't know whether other actresses get this same reaction or not, but it does worry me. Months later, in May of 1932, Peg found herself in Los Angeles. She appeared in The Mad Hopes alongside Billy Burke and subsequently secured her first film role. It seemed like her big break onto Hollywood's A-list may have been right around the corner. Regrettably, 13 Women became Peg's sole credited film appearance, failing both commercially and critically. Initially, granted a considerable amount of screen time, her character, Hazel Cousins, was ultimately reduced to a mere 15 seconds. Tragically, Peg did not live to witness the film's premiere. As often is the case for individuals pursuing an acting career, Peg's small high was followed by a deep low. RKO Studios chose not to renew her studio contract after 13 women, marking the start of Peg's downward spiral. After enduring many losses in her life, she now faced dwindling job opportunities and the end of her acting journey. On September 16, 1932, Peg left her uncle's home, informing him that she was heading for a rendezvous with friends. Little did he know that it would be the last time he would see his niece. September 17th came and went without any word from Peg. 
The following day, a hiker exploring the area beneath the Hollywood Land sign stumbled upon a shoe, a jacket, and a purse during her trek. Inside the purse, she discovered a note that read, quote, I am afraid I am a coward and I am sorry for many things. If I had only done this long ago, I could have saved a lot of pain. The hiker then noticed a lifeless body further down the hill. It was Peg Entwistle. Authorities were alerted, and upon arriving at the scene, the police initially did not know the identity of the woman. The hiker, refusing to disclose her own identity, stated, quote, I was hiking near the Hollywood Land sign today, and near the bottom, I found a woman's shoe and jacket. A little further on, I noticed a purse. In it was a suicide note. I looked down the mountain and saw a body. I don't want any publicity in this matter, so I wrapped up the jacket, shoes, and purse in a bundle and laid them on the steps of the Hollywood police station. The caller then hung up without revealing her name, and she remained unidentified. It was Peg's uncle who eventually pieced together the puzzle after his niece had been missing for two days and hearing about the discovery of a blonde woman below the Hollywood Land sign. The police later concluded that Peg had likely used a ladder left by a workman, leaning it against the back of the letter H to climb to the top. From there, Peg gazed upon the bright lights of the city below before taking the tragic leap. Later, her uncle confided in the police officers, revealing his knowledge of his niece's intense mental anguish. However, during a time when mental health was not well understood, it's unsurprising that little was done to intervene and save Peg from her unfortunate fate. On September 20th, 1932, Peg Entwistle's funeral took place in Hollywood. However, her ashes were subsequently sent back to Ohio, where they were laid to rest alongside her father's remains. For nearly 70 years, Peg rested in an unmarked grave until 2010, when a granite marker was finally placed to commemorate her and her father. Nevertheless, some believe that Peg's spirit continues to reside in the Hollywood Hills. The rumors of the ghost of the Hollywood sign first emerged in the 1940s, following a mysterious incident where the letter H toppled over. Throughout the years, numerous individuals have claimed to witness a haunting blonde woman dressed in 1930s attire among the sign's letters. Others have reported catching the strong fragrance of gardenias, which happened to be Peg's favorite perfume. In the 1990s, a couple, unaware of the woman who may haunt the Hollywood Hills, was hiking in nearby Griffith Park and allegedly witnessed a disoriented blonde woman dressed in 1930s clothing vanish before their eyes. The Hollywood sign is now fenced off and inaccessible to visitors, aiming to prevent people from getting too close. However, hikes in the surrounding area still offer impressive views of this iconic structure. Should the scent of gardenias unexpectedly waft across your path, make sure to keep walking. If you're having feelings of harming yourself or someone else, or even just need someone to talk to, please contact your local mental health facility. Call 911 or call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline by simply dialing 988 in the United States. They're available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and will talk to you about any mental health issue you may be facing. Thanks for letting us tell you this sinister story. If you enjoyed it, subscribe on whatever platform you're on, and hit like, rate it, or leave a comment. Join us next week when we'll take you somewhere sinister.